Hey, we're going to be covering chapter 3.4, solve systems with three variables. So the three variables are x, y, and z, and these appear in the formula ax plus by plus cz equals d, where a, b, and c are not zero. So for example, we could have 2x plus 3y plus 4z equals 5. Now, this looks obviously similar to something with just two variables, which would be 2x plus 3y equals 5. But now we're introducing the third variable, z. So a system of three linear equations. This will be three equations. And like a system of two linear equations, we're trying to find a solution. This solution is an ordered triple as opposed to an ordered pair which would just be x, y. It's an ordered triple whose coordinates, not coordinated, makes each equation true. For example, for example, we could have 3, 7, 2 for a system of linear equations. So for our graph of a linear equation and three variables, so normally a graph of a linear equation and two variables, we would just have our x and y. So we have our x and y planes, and if we think about that in 3D terms, we just have two intersecting planes. Now, since we have three equations, we now have three intersecting planes, so conceptually we have to wrap our mind around this. So our graph, we have one solution would look like these three intersecting planes, so one in the blue, two in the pink, and the third in green, and they all intersect at exactly one point, which would have which would be a system with one solution. Now if they intersect in a line, they have an infinite number of solutions. You probably remember this from systems of linear equations in two variables, where if they intersected in a line, they also had an infinite number of solutions. This remains the same for three variables. Now we can also have an infinite number of solutions if we just have a plane. If all three linear equations have the same equation when graphed, then they all are in a plane. You'll remember this if, like I said before with this line, if the two equations of, or the two equations in a system of two equations ended up having the same line. This is kind of the same concept, concept except with a plane. Now, they can have no solution if there are no intersections like this or like this. So we're going to be solving a system of three equations the same way we did for a system of two equations. So we're going to be using elimination and substitution. So first we'll start with elimination. So we're going to start with the first and third equations here. And we're going to multiply the third equation by... Sorry, I'll get that in white. We're going to multiply the third equation by 2. So we're going to add that then to the first equation, so we have 4x plus 2y plus 3z equals 1 plus 12y minus 2, 12x, sorry, minus 2y plus 8z equals negative 2. And now you can see we can eliminate the y. So now we have an equation with just two variables, x and z. And we want to take another combination of any of these three equations so that we have a second equation with just x and z. So this time we're going to multiply the third equation by negative 3 and then add it to the second equation. So we have 6x minus y plus 4z equals negative 1 times that by negative 3. So we have negative 18x plus 3y minus 12z equals 3. And we're going to add that to the second equation here. So plus 2x minus 3y plus 5z equals negative 14. And now you can see we can cancel out the y's. And we just have negative 16x minus 7. Oh, this should, these should be z's here. Minus 7z equals negative 11. So now we have two equations with x and z. These both do. And we're going to combine those. So we have, I'll just write this one below it. And then we can solve that. The x's cancel out and we get 4z equals negative 12. z equals negative 3. So we've solved for z. 
now that we know z, we can plug it into either e of these equations, this one or this one, to find x. So we can have 16x plus 11 times negative 3 equals negative 1, and x equals 2. Finally, we can plug these into one of our original equations and get y. So z equals negative 3, x equals 2, and y equals 1. So we're going to encounter systems with, one, with um, one solution, like we had last time, so one solution for each variable, or a solution with no or many solutions, and that's what we're going to be covering now. So with first problem A here, uh, we can have, or we can multiply the first equation by negative 4, and then add it to the second. So we have negative 4x minus 4y, minus 4z equals negative 12, plus 4x plus 4y plus 4z equals 7. Now, all three of these are going to cancel out, so we have 0 equals negative 5, and of course those don't equal each other, so we have no solution for this problem. You may recognize that this is similar to a no solution problem of two, a system of two equations, Next, let's solve problem B. So we can just add the two first equations together. So the z will cancel out. We have 2x plus 2y equals 8. And then we can add that to, or we can add the second equation to the third equation to also cancel out the z. So once again, we just have an equation with x's and y's. So let's add these two equations together. We're going to add this one and this one. But we need to multiply this one by negative 2. So we have, I'll write everything, 4x plus 4y equals 16 plus negative 4x minus 4y equals negative 16. Everything will cancel out in this problem, so we have 0 equals 0, which means that we have infinitely many solutions. So we have infinitely many solutions. Oops, well, I didn't spell that right. Infinitely many. You get the point. Infinitely many solutions. So, like we did for our system of two equations, we're going to be solving this one, even though it has three variables, or three equations, also with substitution. So, we need to, to um, plug one of the equations, and this one actually is an easy one. So, we have y equals x plus z. We're going to plug this into this equation. So, we have x plus, and then x plus z as our y, plus z equals 60. So now we have a simplified version, and this is going to be our new first equation, kind of. So now we're going to be plugging in the x plus z part again that we just did into the second equation this time. So we have 100x plus 200x plus z plus 500z equals 30,000 we simplified our second equation, and so this is our um, new second equation, this one. So both this equation and this one are in, or have the vi variables x and z, so we can add those together. We're going to multiply the first equation by negative 600. So we are actually adding negative 1200x minus 12,000, or 1200, excuse me, z equals negative 36,000. Plus, we're bringing down our other equation. So we get negative 500z equals negative 6,000. z equals 12. Then we can plug this into our 
either first or second equation up here, either of these two equations, to solve for x. So for x, we get, after solving, we get 18, and then we can solve for y in, our, in one of our original equations, and after that, we get y equals 30.